HeroScape has an exciting new update in the online scene, a dedicated module in Vassal. And no, I'm not talking about a dedicated liege in feudal Europe, I'm talking about the open source game engine for playing board and card games online. Recently, a member of the community developed a dedicated module for Vassal that's easy to use and available for anyone, but it can take a bit to get started. This video will show you exactly how to get up and running playing HeroScape on Vassal so that you can be slaying dragons in no time. Let's get into it. First, navigate to vassalengine.org and click Get Vassal for Windows. If you have a different system, hit the button underneath to find options for your PC. Not sure what bit your computer is because you're a caveman like me? Type system information into your start menu and look for the answer next to system type. After downloading, run the installer by opening the file you just downloaded. I just went with the default options for everything. And congrats, you've got Vassal installed on your computer. But there's no HeroScape. That's because Vassal is just the program upon which game-specific modules are run. We need to download the HeroScape module, so let's do that now. The modules on vassalengine.org aren't quite up to date. Head on down to the description where I'll link a Google Doc with some info about the module. Click on the link under Module Download, which I've also put separately in the description, and save the file somewhere you'll remember. Whenever an update comes out, you will have to delete the old module file and download the new one, so remember this step. In fact, the module is actively going through updates as it's in the early stages of development, so you'll notice that some of my footage doesn't quite line up with the others. Rest assured, I will be covering every important piece of information, and I will add to the description if any super important updates are released. Open Vessel. As the instructions say, open the module using the File menu in the top left. Navigate to where you saved the extracted folder, open it, and look for the Virtual Valhalla file with the extension Mod. The next time you open the game, it will already be up and available for you to open easily by double-clicking on the module name. If you download an update, you will need to remove this by right-clicking on it and then reopen the new module. Once the module is open, you'll be met with a welcome screen. Start your game offline, even if you plan to play online, you'll be able to open it up to online later. If your opponent has already created the game, just hit look for a game online, and you can find it from this list on the right. If you want to just watch, join as an observer. Otherwise, pick a color and join. Preferably choose red or blue because they will have time controls for tournaments. Also, make sure to keep this box for the wizard checked as it makes setup so much easier. You can always turn it back on or navigate to games from the file menu, but honestly, this is just way simpler. If you want to reopen the wizard at any point, simply quit and reopen the module. Select Mode, which is just the map you want to use, then select your side. If in a competitive game, this will have been determined for you, it will ask if you want to start a log save file. For a casual game, this isn't strictly necessary. For a competitive game, it is, so save it in a known location with the file name as tournament round and your opponent. Make sure you have permission to save to that location or you could lose the log file. And you're in! Let's go through a typical setup. Before doing anything else, go up to the Scenario Setup options in the top, this blue hammer and wrench button, and select Hex Lock from the dropdown. This ensures you can't accidentally drag or move any hexes from the map. Next, let's open this game up to online. Do this by going to the server controls, the blue plug button in the top left. The connect button, the two-way black arrow button, will enter you into the online space. To make your game publicly viewable and playable by your opponent, Enter a name for your new game in a new room and hit create. Then your opponent will see the game name under the main room and be able to join. You can do this at any point in the setup stage or at any point in the game. Anyone can join as observers and easily hop between games to spectate. Just remember to hit that connect button or look for games online from the wizard. If you're like me and you're used to the OHS app or you have a rather square-ish map, you can change where this chat box is by going to file, preferences, or settings, and general, and find the box marked use combined application window. Uncheck it and restart your module and then you'll be able to resize the box and move it anywhere you'd like. I prefer it to be to the left of the map, as that's what I'm used to from the OHS app, although for most of the rest of my footage, it will remain on the top of the map. This layout will also be saved the next time you open the module. First things first, let's get your wound box set up. This is where you keep track of your army cards. Unlike the OHS app, you actually put in your unit names for each different army card in your army, not just heroes. If you need more than four, right click on the box, select swap with, and eight text lines. If you need even more, click on the hex icon and the top bar, select markers, and then drag however many more boxes you need out by the map. To prep your wound box, right click on the wound box, select a unit, and change the name and associated wounds. 
For squads, you don't need to enter wounds, but you do still need to add their name, as this will be where you add your order markers. To add wounds, right-click on the box and simply edit the unit that took the wounds. To add glyphs, go up to this glyph button on the top. A new window will appear with a stack of power glyphs, treasure glyphs, and marvel glyphs in the center. If you click and drag from the stack, you will get random glyphs, but if you want specific ones, right-click on the stack, click Draw Specific Glyph, and then the next glyph you draw out will be the specific one you wanted. Take your selected glyphs and drag and drop onto the hexes marked with glyph icons or any hex you like. If there's a custom glyph you want, use a general glyph to proxy like Brandar. Drag the glyph onto the map, go to the hex button and find the marker tab again, then drag one of these labels on top of the glyph or nearby. Right click to change the label to the glyph you'd like, and you can use these labels for anything. Don't worry, everything we're dropping down on the map will be underneath the figures when they hit the board. Speaking of figures, let's get those on board. Click the little Nigaxa on the top bar. It will open a window with all of the figures. Each squad figure has its own name, but you can simply drag in the first one of the unit, right click and select place all squad units. This will add the rest of the squad sculpts in a straight line next to your first figure. Select the whole squad by dragging or holding shift or control and clicking on each one and then hit select side. I'm the red player, so I'll choose the red side. This is only strictly necessary when you and your opponent share similar figures, but it can be a nice way to visually keep track of whose units are whose on the board anyway, as that is more difficult in two dimensions. This is also very handy for units that you have multiple of, but need to keep track of, like Uncommon Heroes for example. Say Ray Lynn was an Uncommon Hero because you wanted to see just how busted she could get. Make a copy of that Raylin and then choose a different color and voila, they're differentiable. Just add in their color to the start of the wound box. This seems kind of broken, so let's remove the purple Raylin for now. This will also be handy for two life squads. Suppose my opponent had a Frostclaw Paladin and the board, proxied by this Zute. They're marked as a member of the blue team, but if I were to do one wound, they could change the color to purple. Now you don't have to keep track of individual sculpts wounds in the wound box. Let's finish getting the rest of your army. Once your first squad of commons has a side, make sure they're all still selected and copy the figures by hitting Ctrl C. Grab the group and drag them down to the next row of hexes. If you want another squad, make sure to hit Ctrl C again or you'll just end up moving the same squad you just copied. Move the figures onto the board into your start zone by clicking and dragging them onto the hexes. You can drag and drop multiple by selecting multiple just like you did to copy. Don't worry about the movement lines for now, you can get rid of them by left clicking anywhere else on the board. If you need to zoom out or in to more easily see what you're doing, use the magnifying glasses in the top right button bar. If you have a double space figure, you can rotate them by selecting them, holding Ctrl Shift R and then you can freely rotate them or right click and select free rotation. You can also snap them around to hexes, which is what I prefer, using Ctrl Shift and then the left or right arrow key. Let's go back to the scenario settings and remove the start zones to make the map look nice. To get rid of the moved icons that appeared when you place figures, select everything by dragging over all of your figures and hit Ctrl M. Remember that if you forget a shortcut, you can do everything I've showed you and more by clicking and next to any command or hovering over any button will be the shortcut. I promise this will become second nature after your first few games. Now you and your opponent are ready to play. Let's set order markers and roll for initiative. To set order markers, click on the squad details, this guy icon in the button bar, and select your team color. This is important because you will only be able to place and view unrevealed order markers of the squad color that you joined as. For me, this is red. Drag your order markers out of the stack. If you want to do this more neatly, right click, select all four using shift, hit OK, and then drag, and they will pop out all at once in order. If you hover over them, you will see the numbers. Drag them out of this window and right next to your unit name to place them, just like you would in real life. Make sure to do it one at a time or it will stack them in a way that's difficult to see. Your opponent will not be able to view any information about unrevealed order markers or flip them. Only you will be able to. Shrink this window since you'll need it to set order markers every round. We're ready to roll for initiative. Click the d20 at the button bar, but make sure to roll better than I did. In this game, my opponent will go first. They reveal their order marker by selecting their order marker 1 and hitting Ctrl F to flip it so that myself and any spectator would be able to see it. They'll take their turn and they'll mark their movement as done by clicking Ctrl M when their figure is highlighted. I'd highly recommend playing on voice using Discord, but if you have to play over text you can manually mark your turn as done since my opponent has no attacks by typing in the chat window. Now we're ready to take our first turn of the game. I'm ready to move my figures, but I've forgotten how much movement they have. 
To view the card, hover your mouse over the figure for a moment. A view of the card will pop up giving you easy access to their stats and abilities. Not only that, but it will show you what tile and level they are on, since the figures will often obstruct the level number that they're set on. And of course, you can always view the empty board by clicking the eye icon on and off. Hovering your mouse also works on any hex on the board, so you can do this for glyphs as well. If you didn't like your move, you can undo it, or any attack, accidental hex moving, etc. with this undo button at the top, which currently doesn't have a shortcut. I like this move better, so I'll place him here. Virtual Valhalla keeps track of which figures have moved and from where, so you can easily keep track of who's been activated and where they've come from. My opponent has made a critical mistake moving Q9 into firing range, so I'll place my figures here. I can see every movement I made by selecting all of the figures I moved. You'll always know who you've moved by the pink arrow next to the figure. Now I can remove all their movements as done with Ctrl M and go into the attack phase. If you need to check line of sight, turn on the line of sight tool by tapping Ctrl L, make sure nothing is selected, and then click and drag. Turn the feature on and off by the same shortcut or the LOS button in the button bar. If you have it centered in the hexes, it will even count range for you fairly accurately. But Q9 is a big boy and he's easy to spot, so we're just going to take our attacks. I'll let my opponent know who is attacking who by selecting the attacking and targeted figure and hitting Ctrl A, since your opponent can't see your mouse selection highlights. This brings up a little marker to show where the attack is coming from and where it's going to, which is really important when calculating height advantages, terrain or ability bonuses, and so on. Because I only have one target, I'll just toggle the marker on and off down the line of my fourth mass. And of course, if I were on voice chat, I could just declare that I'm moving down the row. To actually make an attack, I'll hit control plus the number of dice I roll, so three dice. In this case, I roll two shields and whiff the attack. I will also numerically display the skulls and shields after the images. Remember, roll better than what I'm showing you in this tutorial. My opponent rolls defense and you can see the result in the chat as well. You can use the graphic images of the dice to determine blanks as a proxy to Valkyrie dice results for flag bears or other abilities. For rolls with double digit dice like Valkyrie general rolls, you can use the drop down or control plus shift plus the second number of the dice. So control plus shift plus two for 12 dice, control plus zero is 10 dice. If you need more than 15 dice, maybe you should be evaluating the scenario that you're playing a little more closely. There's also a shortcut to roll the d20 alt 2, but I kinda like clicking the button to be honest. Well, q9 is a pain in the ass, so I didn't do any damage. I'll type done, which may have a shortcut in the future, and it's my opponent's turn. They'll take a turn with q9, and they've killed my figures. The best convention here is to remove figures from the board and click off the figure to hide the movement. This is polite because it lets your opponent know how much they've killed and what is left on the board, much like real life. The round is over. Return your order markers to the pool by highlighting them and hitting Ctrl plus R or right clicking and selecting return to pool. You can select all of them in the wound box easily by just clicking on the wound box. Obviously, I'm going to win this game, so let's move on to saving logs, loading in games, and watching replays from logs. To save the log file, which is the important file for the game, the one that you named at the very beginning, go to the file menu and hit end log file. Don't worry about hitting save game as that will save a different file type with no chat window history. Now you can easily watch replay or even pick up your game again. To open up the log file, hit load game or log. The better way to do this is to close out of the module and reopen it since the wizard will give you the option to load a log file and it will also clear the chat window. Now you will see your game from the very beginning, and you can step through by hitting the play button in the top left or tapping page down or function plus down arrow. If you hold that shortcut, you will speed through the game. If you want to pick up where you left off and record the new moves, go to the tools menu, hit load log, fast forward, and append. It will ask if you want to save a new log file and hit yes. Save the new log as the same name and just overwrite it, and anything you do now in the chat menu will be added to the end of your original log file. This will also put the game immediately back into the state where you left off, rather than having to scroll through every action in the chat menu. If it asks to save your game, don't bother. That's the alternate file type I was talking about. If it asks to save your log file, and you didn't click end log file, definitely do that. And that's how to play HeroScape Online with Vassal. It's a gorgeous platform with great quality of life features. And while it's still in its infancy, the best part about that is that it's still actively getting worked on. The designer is taking requests from the competitive community, so it will only get better from here. But how do you go around finding games with players to actually play on Vassal? 
The Scapecon War League is, at the time of recording, currently the only competitive league using Vassal. The War League is a team tournament run by the organizers of Scapecon, where teams of 6 to 7 compete in weekly wars, which are a best of 5 of 1v1 games among the teams. Captains privately draft teams before a tournament, so there's no need to worry about finding a team if you don't know anybody. Everyone who signs up will get to compete, and if you're new to online scape, this is actually perfect for you. This is the perfect way to form connections with great players and pick their brains about army building techniques and theory crafting because the captains will submit armies for each week as the formats rotate, and so you as a team will get to work on building all of your armies together. Like other online leagues, players are matched up and then have one week to schedule with their opponent and find a time to play that works best for both of them. The War League server will be linked below and I highly encourage you to join. The seasons right now are only slated to come around maybe twice a year, but it's entirely possible that Basel will start to pick up games from other events or even have other new leagues form around it. If you'd like to see me run a Raigai Plays Games Presents event on Basel, let me know in the comments below. Vassal's replays and logs have huge implications for competitive scape and content creation, so I'm really excited to see where this goes. This could be the future of online scape. Oh, old hero scape can't come to the phone right now. Why? They, they thought it could have been a text. Bye.